In 2 Samuel chapter 11, verse 1 up to 11, ito po yung istorya. Ito po yung reference po natin, yung, the, the story behind David committing adultery with Bathsheba. Makikita natin dito, and I want to read to you a few of it so that we can go it through. Para may ibigay ko yung background sa inyo. Kung paano ginawa ni David itong kalokohan nito at the very onset of his life, nasa kanyang Panginoon, tamang kanyang puso, ang Panginoon ay nasa kanya, ang presensya ng Diyos nasa kanya. How come he can do these things? Karumal-dumal sa mata ng Diyos. So to speak, in 2 Samuel, in chapter 11, in verses 1 up to 4, it reads, In the spring at the time when King Kings go off to war. David sent Joab out of his, out with the king's men and the whole Israel army. They destroyed the Ammonites and besieged Rabbah. But David remained in Jerusalem. Supposed to be na si David ay pupunta doon sa war together with his army. Nag-relax siya doon sa Jerusalem. Nag-relax siya, do, nag siya doon sa kanyang palace. And this is what had happened. One evening, isang gabi, he got up in his bed and walked around the roof. Pumunta siya sa rooftop ng kanyang palace. From the roof, he saw a woman bathing. Okay? The woman was very beautiful and David say, said someone to find, about, find out about her. The, the man said, Isn't this Bathsheba, the daughter of Eliam, the wife of Uriah, the Hittites? Then David sent messengers to get her. She came to him and he slept with her. She had purified herself from her uncleanness. Then she went back home. The woman conceived and sent words to David saying, I am preggy. Sabi ni Bathsheba, I am pregnant. Buntis ako, Haring David. David this time, isa na siyang hari. After the injustices of King Saul, Vinindicate siya ng ating Panginoon. Ngayon, siya na ang hari ng Israel. This time, supposed to be nandun siya sa war. Pero nagre-relax siya doon sa rooftop ng kanyang palace. Supposed to be a king. <laughs> supposed to be a king. He was on the battleground fighting with his army. How come relaxing this time? Hindi lang yon, hindi lang nagre-relax, hindi lang mayroong iced tea, nagpiping tom pa siya. Voyeurism. And to cut the story short, nabihag siya ng kanyang damdamin, nagkaroon siya ng last, kinuha niya si Bathsheba with all his power. Nagkaroon sila ng anak. And to remove Uriah, the, 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 the husband of, of Bathsheba, to remove Uzai, um um, anong pangalan niya? Uriah, into the scene, sinabi niya sa kanyang, sa kanyang kawal, ilagay niyo sa Ur si Uriah doon sa front line ng battle. To cut the story short, namatay po si Uriah. Two evil things he committed. Adultery and murder. How come? David experienced the justice of God. Now he himself giving in justice to his man Uriah. Not only to, the, to Uriah, but all throughout his family and even his nation. How come a man who experienced God's justice now practicing injustice? How come a man, a man after God's own heart now committing adultery and murder? How come a man of success now became a man of failure? Second same chapter 12, the next chapter in verses 1 up to 25 in your reference. And here is a scene coming in. It is Prophet Nathan. Pumunta si Prophet Nathan. He came to the scene. And I want to read to you in, in, in verse 7 to 12, but before that, in verse, in verse 1 up to 6, Prophet Nathan created a story, nag-create siya ng story, sabi niya, may isang taong, isang, 
isang taong, dalawang tao, yung isa napakayaman niya, yung isa pobre siya, yung mayaman na sa kanya lahat ng cattle, lahat ng sheep, ang dami niyang pag-aari-arian, ang dami niyang mga cattle. But there is one man, isa lang ang kanyang lamb. It's a ewe lamb, batang, batang lamb pa yan. At inalagaan niya yan, as in parang anak niya. Pagkatapos may dumating na mama asking for help. Yung mayaman na tao, kinuha pa niya yung nag-iisa, ayaw niyang ibigay, ayaw niyang magbigay sa niya. Kinuha niya niya. It's an injustice. Anong nalaman ni David, bakit sino yung mama yan? Galit na galit si David. Sino yung mamang yan? Umentrada ngayon si Nathan. And here's the whole story. In, cha- in, in verse 7 of chapter 12, then Nathan said to David, You are that man. Si kadaita nga tao, kinunana. Si kadaita, David. You made injustice to your people. You are the man. This is what the Lord, the God of Israel says. I anointed you king over Israel and I delivered you from the hand of Saul. I gave your master house to you and your master wives into your, ar- into your arms. I gave you the house of Israel and Judah. And if all his, this had been too little, I would have been gin- give even more to you. Sabi niya, intad ko amin kanya moon. And I can give you more. Why can you do that to that single man? And here, why did you despise the word of the Lord by doing what is evil in his eyes? You struck down Uriah the Hittite with the sword and took his wife to be your own. You killed him with the sword of the Ammonites. Now, therefore, the sword shall never depart from your house because you despised me and took the wife of Uriah the Hittite to be your own. David, a man after God's own heart, now became a man of failure. First, first failure is that he was a failure as a husband. Failure as a husband. Hindi siya makontento sa isang babae. Hindi siya makontento sa isang asawa. He was a failure being a husband. Secondly, he was a failure being a father. Because of the sin he had committed, ang repercussion nito, mga kapatid, grabe, ang tindi po ang nangyari sa kanyang pamilya. As what Nathan said, as Nathan confronted him, he failed to discipline his children. In chapter, 11, in chapter 13, the next chapter of 2 Samuel, from Samuel, Samuel 11, 2 Samuel 11, Bathsheba, chapter 12, Narinibuke siya ni, 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 ni Nathan. Chapter 13, ito yung effect ng kanyang sin. A failure. He was a failure as a father. Failure niyang mga kanyang mga anak. Si Amnon, ang kanyang anak, rinape niya ang kanyang kapatid na si Tamar. At hindi lang yon. Si Absalom, pinatay niya. Si Amnon dahil sa galit niya sa kanyang pag sa kanyang kapatid. Amazing. David was a successful leader in his community. But, a failure leader in his own family. Far be it from us, brothers and sisters, as husbands, as a leader of our family, Pwede tayong maging leader ng nasyon, leader ng komunidad, leader ng isang organisasyon. Pero pag hindi naman natin kayang ilid ang ating asawa, ang ating mga anak, we are failures. And David's response to the rebuke, David acknowledged wholeheartedly, without complaining, without blaming somebody, sabi niya, ako ang nagkamali. Ako ang nagkamali. Ay, ako nagwagi pala nun. And he, he resolved in his heart, ako ang nagkamali. And he said in, in Psalm 51 verse 4, against you, you only I have seen and done what is evil in your sight so that you are proved right when you speak and justified when you judge. Against you only, Lord, sa'yo lang ako nagkamali. Wala nang iba. Wala akong ibang sisisihin ang sarili ko lang. Lord, I'm so sorry. 
David's response to his failure, his response is this, that something that we can learn today is that he responded with from desperation to hope. Can you say that with me? From desperation to hope. From desperation to hope. David was so desperate when he learned, when he was rebuked by Nathan. Desperation is feeling of being despair. We feel desperate when we are frustrated. There may mayroon tayong tinatawag na desperado. Sino siyo na-experience you sometimes na di-desperado ka sa buhay mo? Sino siyo one point in your life mo na desperado ka? Come on. Na-desperado ka, bro? Ano ibig, ano, anong ibig sabihin ng desperado sa'yo? Na-busted ka ba? Ganon? Ah. Dispirado raw, tatlong, tatlong taon ka na naliligaw pagkatapos bigla kang binasted. Pinaasa ka tapos binasted ka. Dispirate. Si David, dispiradong dispirado. Sabi niya, despair is a toxic. It is a poisonous, just like a venom. Pag dispirado ka raw, because it is toxic, it's just like a venom until it paralyzes you and you cannot move. Kaya maraming tao hindi makamove. Dahil desperado sila. Desperation is not just away our joy. Desperation is not just away our very purpose, or the very sense of purpose in our life. Desperation is not just the very hope, the very life that we have. Kaya maraming taong desperado, magpakamatay na lang ako. Tapusin ko na lang itong buhay na to. But for David, it's something different. He was so desperate dahil he was rebuked by Nathan and he realized he sinned against God. And David feels that desperation in Psalm 51 verse 11, what we've read a while ago. Do not cast me from your presence or take your Holy Spirit from me. David was so desperate, hindi lang dahil nagkasala siya. At dahil sa kanyang kasalanan, what made him desperate is that the very presence of God shines away from him. Nawala yung presensya ng Panginoon, kaya na cast me not away from thy presence, O Lord. David knew how desperate it is when God's presence is absent because of sin. Bawat kasalanan na nagagawa natin, kapatid, it shuns us away, it casts us away from the very presence of God. Ramdam na ramdam, mga kapatid, ni David, ang pagkawalan ng presence ng Panginoon sa kanyang buhay. Ramdam na ramdam, yun po ang dispirado niya. He's not desperate. Ah, kababain mo, jikarubak. There are sometimes when you made something wrong, akababay, anong na lang sasabihin ng mga magulang ko? Anong na lang sasabihin ng mga, ng, ng mga ta? Anong sasabihin ni pastor? Kababa, Jin. Di ba? But for David, hindi kababay, Lord. It's you, Lord. Kababay, in kanyam, Lord. I feel the separation because of sin. Because, because sin separates us from God. The presence of sin is the absence of God's presence in our lives. Dito sa ating puso, ramdam ni David. Ramdam mo, kapatid, pag nagkasala ka, alam mo, may nawala sa'yo. Hello? Ramdam mo. The presence of sin shines us away from the very presence of God. And, the, and this is the real issue of man's failure. The real issue of man's failure is what you call sin. S- I N. You go back to the news sa mga headlines ng mga balita. Karumal-dumal na pangyayari. Ayaw mo nang pakinggan. Mauma kan. Kasjay manan. Syria, almost 1,000 people died. More than 1,000 people died. Oh gosh, oh God. Ano bang pulot dulo lahat ng mga failures na to? It's none other than S-I-N, sin. The fall of a man was originated in Genesis chapter 3 when Adam and Eve get away 
from the authority, from the command and authority of God. Umalis sila sa umbrella ng Panginoon, sa kanyang command. nag sila sa Panginoon. What had happened? They had been kicked out from the garden. They had been kicked out from the very presence of God. Not only that, they had been kicked out from the very blessings of God. Ang masama kapatid, pag nagkasala po tayo, hindi lang nawawala yung presence ni God. Even no matter how tried you want to be successful in life, bakit apay ta nagrigat tibiyag? Until now, hindi pa rin ako successful. Kayod ka ng kayod, but wala pa rin kwarta, wala pa rin pera. And life is so difficult for you. After man's fall, man is desperate, search for an answer in life's pain, sufferings, and failure. Sin is the issue because sin is the very root of man's failure. Sin also is the very signs and symptoms of every failure that we have. Kung may kasalanan, baka sinyalis na yan. Bumalik ka na sa Panginoon kapatid or else you will go and lead you to your failure. And God is knocking on the door of our hearts. Just like David, he responded so quickly. Nowadays, ang mga sin po, sometimes we view it as psychological or, or medical issues. Alam mo yung ganon? Ang mga kasalanan, sometimes parang it's a, it's a medical issue or it's a psychological problem. Just like ito, um, yung word na adultery. We use the word affair instead of adultery. Parang mas magaan, pakinggan, ang kasalanan. Mm, meron ka akong affair. Pero huwag sinan, ah, meron ka akong ka-adultery. Diba? <laughs> meron akong ka-immorality. We don't want to hear that. Pero pag may, ah, meron akong fling. O, oh, diba? Mas cute. Hello? Sexual active instead of fornication. We're just, you know, active lang naman yung mga hormones namin eh. At pareho kaming dalaga at binata. We know, okay lang kami. I'll never realize it is a fornication. Hormones instead of sexual lust. Alcoholics instead of drunkenness. Ah, alcoholics kasi ako eh. Pero ay mo sabihin, ah, lasinggero yan. <laughs> Ayaw natin pakinggan na lasinggero ako. No, a little bit, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm alcoholics, you know. Mas cute, di ba? Misunderstood instead of rebellion. Nagre-rebel din na nga. Hindi, mis- ano, misunderstood lang yan na kanyang behavior. O ito pa, bago ito ngayon. Di ba? Pidaf instead of hold off. We tend to sugarcoat sin. We tend to lighten sin. We don't want to see or feel the gravity of a sin. We sugarcoat everything. Mahilig tayo dito sa Pinoy. Baha na nga, pero mo, pinagkakatawaan. Pat- nagiging patwa pa, nasa baha na nga, pero alam mo ganun, masayahin pa rin sila. And we try everything just like that. Di ba? Pag mahirap ka, sasabihin, ah, may galis ka. Pero pag mayaman, ay, allergy yan, allergy. Ah, daangkit mo. Ngam nung mayaman ka, asthma yan, asthma. Hello? Ano ba? Kurad day ta, kurad. <laughs> kurad day ta. No, it's a viral infection, you know. Oba? See? We try to sugarcoat everything. Linalighten natin yung sin natin. But the reality here, napaka-grievous po. Ang isang kasalanan. We try to hide the truth of our failures in life. Yung wickedness, na, wickedness natin. Yung corruption, yung perversion. You know, no matter how hard we try to lessen or to correct our own fail- failure, mga kapatid, we cannot. Why? Ask me why. Because since the beginning, we are a fallen, we have this what you call fallen nature. Because of our fallen nature, 
Psalm 51 verse 5, sabi niya, Surely I was sinful at birth, sinful from the time my mother conceived me. David acknowledged, Lord, SSB ako Lord, sinful since birth. He acknowledged that. Because of sin, we fall short. We have these shortcomings. Kahit anong gawin po natin, we cannot hit the target. We cannot hit the mark. We fail to meet God's standards because of sin. We fail to meet God's standard. We've missed the mark for all of sin and fall short of the glory of God. David understands that the gravity and the grievousness of singular sin from voyeurism, from peeping tone to naging act and it affects even his family. One sin can affect your generation to the next. One single sin that is not addressed will lead to another sin which is bigger. Ang isang kasalanan na maliit na hindi na address mga kapatid, it will lead to another sin which, which is bigger. Be careful with that. Sin hurts. It hurts our loved ones. It hurts our family. It hurts somebody. Most especially, it hurts God. Mga kapatid, magpasalamat tayo na mayroon tayong mga Nathan sa buhay natin and we need Nathans in our lives. We need Nathans in our life who will say to our face, say, look, ano, ibagam niya, tarupam. He will say, tarupam, bro, what you are doing is mali, is wrong. What you are doing, ang ginagawa mo sa asawa mo, mali yan. And we need somebody who would speak to us. A Nathan in our lives to correct us or to rebuke us. And in times of desperation, David acknowledged his sin. In times of failure, we may feel this desperation. But we allow the process of desperation to acknowledge any kind of sin in us. May failure tayo ngayon. Let us be desperate for a moment. But let us allow that process. I-contemplate natin, Lord, is there any amount of sin in my heart? Lord, at dati pinagbasula kaya? Lord, anya tinaramid ko nga madi? The saddest thing that will happen is that Ang dami mo nang ang failure sa buhay mo, ayaw mo pang aminin na ikaw ay makasalanan. Ang dami nang ang failure na nangyayari sa buhay mo, hindi mo pa rin kayang aminin na ang punot dulo ng problema yan ay walang iba kundi ikaw rin. Kasalanan. True desperation is realizing that we are broken away from God because of our sin and recognizing our need before God for forgiveness. Yan po, ang tunay na dispirasyon po. We acknowledge that God, I need you, Lord. I need your forgiveness. I need your mercy and I need your grace. Lord, I need you, Lord. In times of desperation, David connected to God. He worshiped God. Nag-worship ka kay, siya kay Lord. Pleading for mercy and grace. That's why Psalm 51 had been written. Nasulat ang Psalm 51. And when David wa- had been connected to God through worship, then David can hope again. David can, ho- can hope again from desperation to hope. When you connect your hearts to God in times of failure, then you can hope again in the Lord. In Psalm 51 verse 12, Restore to me the joy of your salvation and grant me a willing spirit to sustain me. David's hope is restoration. The restoration that David wants is the restoration of his relationship with God. Restore to me the joy of your salvation. Lord, yung presensya mo. Lord, yung presence mo. Lord, yung relationship natin. Gustong ma-restore ng, ng, ni David ay yung relasyon niya sa kanyang Diyos na alam niya dahil sa kanyang kasalanan na pahiwalay siya sa kanyang Panginoon. How many times in our failures in life, we want restoration. Lord, restore my family. Restore my career. Lord, restore my finances. Restore this thing. Restore my ministry. And dami na, restore, my, this, re, restore my relationship with my wife, with my husband, with my kids. But have we 
ask God, Lord, restore my relationship with you. Dahil simulat sa Paul ng failure na to, Lord, ang failure, ang dapat i-restore ay yung relationship ko sa'yo. Hindi yung reputation ko, hindi yung honor, yung dignidad. Pag nauna ang presyansya ni Lord, the dignity, the honor, the reputation will just follow. Your family will just follow. Your finances will just follow. The joy of your salvation. Sabi niya, willing spirit, David hopes, is the restoration of the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit is a person. David understood that the Holy Spirit had been grieved. Nagtatampo ang banal na spirito. Every time na nagkakasala tayo, nagtatampo, gumura, kakabsat. Gumura di presensya ni Apo every time we committed sin. And that is the hope of David. Lord, bring back to me that Holy Spirit. And to restore back that willing spirit is to have a willing heart. Lord, my heart is willing to be restored. Kaya nag-repent siya. Kaya makita natin doon in Psalm 51 verse 17, the sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and a contrite heart. Ano ibig sabihin ng contrite? Contrite heart is apologetic heart, remorseful, sorrowful heart, mapagpakumbabang puso, puso na nagsusori. Anong kabaliktaran ng contrite heart? Concrete heart, matigas na puso. Nagkaka-failure na ang buhay, ayaw pa rin palambutin ang puso. Pero kay David, inamin niya, Lord, it is my heart. Lord, it is my heart. Restoration comes after repentance. God restores a heart that is humble, broken, and a contrite before Him. Rene-restore, mga kapatid, na puso ng Panginoon ay yung pusong inaamin. Makasalanan ako. Hindi ako malinis. Failure ako. Pero kung matigas ang ating puso, ah, okay ako. Okay, wala problema, wala. Eh, wala rin babaguhin ng Panginoon. David is a man who is quick to repent. Let us be like him, mga kapatid, brothers and sisters. Let us be quick to repent. In Psalm 51 verse 10, Create in me a pure heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. David's hope of restoration is having a new heart with God again. Having a new spirit with God. A life that you have to start all over again. He knew that God is willing and able to forgive and cleanse him once again. That's why in Psalm 51 verses 1 up to 3, it is the very repentant heart of David. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your unfailing love, according to your great compassion, blot out my transgression. Wash all my iniquities and cleanse me from my sin, for I know my transgression and my sin is always before me. Lord, I'm sorry I'm here right now. If there is repentance, there is restoration. That is the very hope of David. And when he repents, when he humbles down to the Lord, he's connecting his heart to God. What he can find is that when he worships God, he will know God more. Kilala niya at makikilala pa niya kung sino ang kanyang Diyos. In times of failure, mga kapatid, anong ginagawa natin? Tumatakbo ba tayo? Nagigilty tayo? Ayaw nating lumapit sa Panginoon? Or in our desperation, mag-contemplate tayo ano yung mga kasalanan natin? Lalapit tayo sa Kanya. When we go into God, we will find grace and mercy. Kilala, niya, kilala ni David kung sino ang Kanyang Diyos. Itong masarap pag-worshipper ka. Pag-worshipper worshiper ka, close ka kay God. Pag-worshipper ka, kilala mo kung sino ang iyong ang yung Ama. Diyos ay hindi pupunta pag nag-worship ka kay Lord, hindi siya nakaganito. Hmm, anya man ang tinaramid mo. But David knew his God. When he worshiped God, he knew God is a gracious God. God is a merciful God. God is a loving God. And in times of failure, David found mercy and grace. His heart had been cleansed by God. He had been forgiven. And his life is new again. In times of failure, 
in times that we fall, we can always hope in God's grace and mercy. One last scripture as we pray today. In Titus 3, verse 3 up to 7, it reads, One time we too were foolish, disobedient, deceived, and enslaved by all kinds of passions and pleasures. We lived in malice and envy, being hated and hating one another. But, everybody say but. But, when the kindness and love of God, our Savior, appears. That's one good thing about when we, are, when we fall, when we are failure in our lives. And we respond right with our hearts. The kindness and the love of God will appear. It continues. He saved us not because of righteous things we have done, but because of his mercy. He saved us through the washing of rebirth and renewal by the Holy Spirit, whom he poured out on us generous, generously through Jesus Christ our Savior, so that having been justified by his grace, we might become ears having the hope of eternal life. In times of failure, God reveals his kindness. In times of failure, when we worship him and connect our hearts to him through our songs, God can reveal his love. God can reveal himself that he's a forgiving God. God can reveal himself that he can give back the Holy Spirit that washes us just like a water. God can restore us as in, as if, bagong bago ulit tayo. Amen? In times of failure, we can find God's grace and mercy. In times of failure, we can see God's greatness. More than a song, we can worship God in times of failure. We worship God not because we are good, but because He is good. We worship God not because we are perfect, but He is perfect. We worship God not because we are worthy, but God, Jesus Christ, is worthy to receive all, on, all, all honor and praise. Amen? More than a song. It is a song. It is a heart for God that despite of different conditions, in battles, in weakness, in injustices, even in times of failures, even in times of committing sin, we will see the greatness of God, that He is a kind, loving, forgiving, a God full of grace and mercy. Amen po ba, mga kapatid? Tayo ito mayo at tayo manalangin. Katulad ng ginawa ni Haring David, natidiniklara niya, Lord, sa buhay na to, Lord, walang iba kundi ikaw. Walang iba kundi ikaw ang magbibigay ng satisfaction, magbibigay ng kagalakan, ng saya sa aking buhay. Kundi, Panginoon, ikaw lamang. Kaya sabi na David, cast me not away from my presence, from your presence. Today, as we pray, no matter what situation we are facing right here, right now, search natin yung mga puso natin. As I'm sharing this message today, some of you in your heart, God is speaking, giving conviction in our hearts to say, Lord, I'm so sorry from all of my sin. Malaking kasalanan, maliit na kasalanan. Para sa mga tao ng Diyos, kasalanan pa rin yan. At kailangan nating magpakumbaba. Katulad ni David, quick to repent and say, God, my heart is right here right now. Lord, forgive me, cleanse me. Restore me once again. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, we thank you. Panginoong Diyos, maraming salamat. Dahil ikaw ang Diyos na nagmamahal
na ikaw ang Diyos na aming kilala. Na kung anuman, Panginoon, ang nagawa naming kasalanan, na ikaw ang Diyos. Na handang tanggapin ulit kami na ikaw ang Diyos na handang patawarin. Na handang linisin at handang digyan ng bagong buhay. Katulad Panginoon ng awit ni Haring David, Cast me not away from thy presence, O God. Lord, I need your presence now. Yung joy ng aming salvation. From the very first day, Panginoon, na nakilala ka namin, yung init ng aming pagkakilala ng aming pagmamahal sa iyo, yung alab ng aming puso para magsamba sa iyo, Lord, ibalik mo muli. Lord, anuman ang aming nagawang kasalanan, anuman ang aming nagawang pagkakamali, i-reveal mo sa amin, Panginoon. Tulungan mo po kami na siya sa atin, i-search, i-check ang aming mga puso. So that katulad ni David, Lord, we will move in desperation. And in our desperation, we will find hope in you. So that we could see your greatness. We could see, Lord, in our problems. We could see you, Lord, in our lives. In, Lord, in our weaknesses, in our injustices, in our failures, in our condition as a sinner. Since birth, simulat sa pool, Panginoon, makasalanan na ako. Ang dami kong kasalanan, Panginoon. Hindi ko pinagkakaila yun, Lord. Katulad ni Haring David, Panginoon, Dinisin mo po kami at handa mo kaming umawit para sa'yo. Kumonekta para sa'yo. Let's worship the Lord today. Why not connect to the Lord? Whatever the condition of your heart today. Maybe mayroong kasalanan or may, the Lord is saying there's a failure or you committed sin against the Lord. And God is showing to you something.